biology. So welcome again to this class where today I want us to discuss about the chemical compounds constituting living organisms. So we see that the cells of living organisms is mainly made up of organic component and the inorganic component. So what are the inorganic components inside the bodies of the cell? So first of all we have salt and we have water which makes up the inorganic part. So what about the organic part? So the organic part is made up of carbohydrates, protein, lipids and finally we have the nucleic acids. So let's first of all start with the carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates they are simply referred to as sugars whereby they have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in their compound structure. So the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 for the carbohydrate whereby the value of n represents the number of carbon atoms which are responsible for being in the carbohydrate. So it is divided into three groups or three types whereby we have a monosaccharide, disaccharide and a polysaccharide. So let's begin by looking at the first one which is the monosaccharide. So what are monosaccharides? So these are the simplest sugars that we have and therefore they have the general formula of CH2O and then you close the bracket N whereby you say that N is the value of carbon atoms in the compound. So whereby the N, whereby N is equals to 3, so the compound is called a triose. Whereby the N is equals to 5, the compound is called a pentose. And then finally whereby the N is equals to 6, the, uh, the compound is called hexose. Whereby this is the most common compound. So the monosaccharide is divided into three groups or three uh, categories or three types of monosaccharides rather. Whereby we have glucose, we have fructose, and then lastly we have galactose. So what are the properties of monosaccharides? So the first property is that they are sweet tasting. The second property is that they are soluble in water. The third property is that they are reducing sugars whereby they reduce blue copper 2 sulfate solution into red copper 1 oxide uh, solution. So the other one is that they are crystalline in nature. Then lastly, uh, we may combine two monosaccharides in the process of condensation to give us a disaccharide. So what are the functions of the monosaccharide? So the first function is that they are oxidized to release energy into the mitochondrion and again into the cell. And then lastly is that they are the building blocks of disaccharide and polysaccharide. So let's look at the other group of carbohydrates, which is the disaccharide. So what are disaccharides? So these are uh, sugars which are mainly formed from condensation of two or more monosaccharide. So this process involves the loss of single water molecule and therefore it is called condensation whereby we will react one monosaccharide with another monosaccharide to form a disaccharide plus a water molecule. So the three types of disaccharides we have, we have sucrose, we have maltose and then finally we have lactose. So let's give, give it an example by condensing the monosaccharide to see what disaccharide we will have. So when we when we combine glucose and fructose, we get sucrose plus water. When we combine glucose plus glucose, we'll get maltose plus water. When we combine glucose plus galactose, we'll get lactose plus water. So that was combining monosaccharide plus monosaccharide to obtain a disaccharide plus water. So the properties of disaccharide are more or less the same as the monosaccharide. They are sweet testing, they are soluble in water, they are crystalline in nature. So here we'll say that uh, maltose and lactose are reducing sugars while sucrose is non-reducing sugar. They are formed by condensation of two monosaccharide. So the other thing you should know is that when we break down a disaccharide, we'll get two monosaccharides. So for example, if we break down sucrose, we'll get glucose plus fructose. So the process whereby a disaccharide is broken into two monosaccharide or monosaccharide, the process is called hydrolysis whereby we use dilute hydrochloric acid. So the water molecule here is responsible for breaking down the disaccharide to two monosaccharides. So finally let's look at the functions of the disaccharide. So again, sucrose is the main uh, medium by which food is translocated in the plants. And then finally, we'll say that they, are, they act as respiratory substrate when, whereby when hydrolyzed, they release energy to the cell. Now finally, let's look at the polysaccharides. So what are polysaccharides? So polysaccharides, these are complex carbohydrates whereby they have a general formula of C6, 
H10O5. So the value of N here is very large. So they are mainly formed by combination of very many monosaccharides. So the bond between one monosaccharide to the other is called a glycosidic bond. So mainly polysaccharide, they comprise of starch, we have glycogen, then finally we have cellulose. So let's look at these types of polysaccharide. So we are going to begin with starch. So starch, it's mainly a storage uh, medium by which plants store their food after photosynthesis. So what about glycogen? So glycogen is a storage carbohydrate in animal cells mostly, whereby in human beings it is stored in the liver and the muscles. So lastly we have cellulose which is a structural carbohydrate whereby the major, it's the major raw material for cell wall in plants. So what are the properties of polysaccharides? So the first property is that they are insoluble, uh, whereby these aspects make them ideal for storage material as they do not exert any osmotic pressure, hence they don't easily diffuse out of the cell, thereby making them uh, to be ideal for this process. So the other properties that they are not sweet tasting, unlike the other two that we have seen. And, and again, we might say that they are all non reducing sugars. So finally, let's look at the functions of the polysaccharide. So we see that starch is the, ma uh, starch stored, is the main stored carbohydrate in plants, while glycogen is the main form of stored carbohydrate in animals. And then cellulose is a main raw material for the manufacture of the cell wall in plants. So, the last function we might say that uh, the polysaccharide might be hydrolyzed to very many monosaccharides to act as a respiratory substrates in giving the cell energy and in turn giving the organism energy. So we have been discussing about the chemical components constituting living organisms. So let's meet on the next class as we continue to discuss on the other organic which is lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Biology.